Number one, when we electrolyze brine, which is actually concentrated sodium chloride solution, we get chlorine and sodium hydroxide. Now these two will react to form NaCl and NaOCl if, if they mix together. So we need a diaphragm to prevent the products of the electrolysis from reacting together. Number two, Ion X plus contains 8 protons. Now, 8 protons, when it was an atom, its configuration will be S2, 1S2, 2S2, and 2P4. To form an ion as X plus, it will have to lose 1 electron. So, it ends up with 1S2, 2S2, the 2P4 becomes 2P3, okay, after losing 1 electron to form X plus. Number 3, how do we express the second ionization energy of sodium? First of all, we write out the equation of second ionization energy. Na plus, losing one electron to form Na2 plus, and they all gases form. Once we have this overall equation, we will try to find out which of the four on the left side can combine to give us this overall equation. So, we see that we need an Na plus gas, and it is given by this equation. But however, Na plus gas is on the right side of this equation, so we flip the whole equation around and write it out Na plus on the left side, okay, Na gas on the right side. We flip it around. And because we flip it around, the W enthalpy change will become minus W. So that's our first equation. And then that settles the Na plus gas on this side. And then we see that we need Na2 plus gas on the right side. And then we look down the row. We have Na2 plus gas on here and here. Okay. However, this Na2 plus gas is paired with an Na solid, which is not what we want. So this is out. This Na is actually a gas gaseous form, so that's what we want. And it is in the correct order because we want Na plus or Na2 plus on the right side. The Na2 plus is on the right side for this equation. So we write it out as it is here, from left to right. And since this is the same direction, the change in energy will still remain as x. Once we have these two equations, we realize that we can combine them. And the Na gas and Na gas cancels out on either side. Two electrons and one electron. We have one electron on the right side. And if we merge them down, Okay, we actually have this overall equation. So, minus W plus X, that's the second ionization energy, energy of sodium. Number four, iodine reacting with sulfur dioxide, and they give us some clues that one mole of sodium Sulfur dioxide is oxidized by one mole of iodine. So we write out the half equation for the one that we know. Iodine will become iodide. Okay. Is it is itself is reduced, and then two electrons are involved per mole of iodine. So I write out the statement. One mole of iodine will gain two moles of electrons. And where does this two moles of electron go to? It will go to the one mole of sulfur dioxide. So one mole of sulfur dioxide. Or where does this electron comes from? It, it will come from sulfur dioxide. The sulfur dioxide itself will lose two moles of electrons. So one mole of iodine gains two moles of electrons. One mole of sulfur dioxide loses that two mole of electrons. And when you lose electrons, your oxidation number will increase. If you lose two moles of electrons, your oxidation number will increase by two. So oxidation number of sulfur during the reaction will increase by two units. So at the start, your sulfur in sulfur dioxide will be plus four. At the end, since it increases by two units, it will end up to be plus six.
Number five, we have a coin that has a mass of 10 grams and 20% is made out of nickel. So simply 2 grams will be made out of nickel. And then from there we find out that the most of nickel will be 2 divided by MR, which can be found from the periodic table. And in the end we have 2 over 58.7 moles of nickel. And once we have the number of moles, to find the number of atoms, we multiply by 6 times 10 to the power 23. Yeah, that will give us A. Number 6, which ions has more electrons than protons? and more protons than neutrons. First of all, we tackle the more electrons than protons. Since it has more electrons than protons, it will be negatively charged. That eliminates B straight away. And then we have three more options. We have to find out the protons and the neutrons. So if we calculate them out, okay, you can compare your answers. We will have all these protons and neutrons respectively. And having more protons than neutrons will give us D, the hydroxide ion. Number 7, we have this molecule. What are the angles? So I translate it down to here to indicate the lone pairs and all that, and the bond pairs. For the first angle, CH, there are three H, and all that is tetrahedral, or actually there are four bonds for the carbon, so there are no lone pairs here. But four bonded pairs is tetrahedral shape, 109.5. This carbon uses up four bonds. Right here, there's a double bond, there's no lone pair here, so it's three bonded pair, no lone pair, it's trigonal planar. 120 degrees. For the oxygen here, there are two lone pairs. So it will be bent, which will be 107.5 and all that. So in terms of angles, right, the smallest angle will be angle C, angle 3, then followed by 1 and then 2. Number 8, we have heat of combustion given for these substances and we are supposed to find heat of formation. The simple equation will be heat of formation is heat of reactants minus heat of products. So we have 4 times of carbon because there's 4 carbon here plus 5 times of hydrogen combustion and then we subtract one mole of your products, which is a butane. Once we do these calculations, we will have minus 129 kilojoules per mole. Number nine, we have a fuel burn and then part of the energy, 45%, is absorbed by 200 grams of water and there's a temperature rise and they give you specific heat capacity. So first of all we have to find out the heat absorbed by the water. Mass of water multiplied by specific heat capacity multiplied by the temperature rise 66 minus 18. So this is the energy in joules absorbed by the water and this energy is actually only 45% whatever was released by the fuel so I put the note down here we have to find out how much is actually released by fuel in total 100% so this is 45% to find out 100% we take this 
divide by 45 multiplied by 100. So this is the amount of energy released by the fuel in total, right, of which only 45% went to heat up the water. The rest could be lost to surroundings or heat, heating the container and all. Now, since this is a total released by the fuel, they want energy released per gram of fuel. So you take this total, divide by the 1.6 grams that we use. So this is the energy in joules per gram of fuel. Number 10, we have an equilibrium, a sterification. So they are supposed, we are supposed to find out the number of moles of your esters form. We form an equilibrium table. Initially, we have one mole of your reactants and no products form yet. We do include water here. Just be careful because water is, they are not in aqueous form. So water is, is significant, right? So, and the change, we know that this will be decreased by x amount, minus x minus x, and the products will increase by x amount also. Right? Water will be included again. And then the equilibrium amount, we will have all these values. So we form the Kc products over reactants. So we have x square and 1 minus x square. That will be equated to 4. Once we have this equation, we will get rid of the squares by having square rooted both sides. So square root here, we get x over 1 minus x. Square root 4, we get 2. Then we are down to a simple equation to solve for x. In the end, we will get x equals to 2 thirds. Eleven, which equation represents enthalpy change of atomization of iodine? Definition wise, is forming of one mole of iodine gas atoms. So it could be A, which is one mole, or C, one mole of gas atoms. And then we have to know the second part of the definition. It has to come from the substance at its standard state. So iodine should be a solid at standard state conditions, right? not a gas. That's why it's C. which one has the same, same percentage mass of hydrogen and oxygen? Answer is C. Here we have one oxygen. Its contribution to the m will be 1 multiplied by 16. And we have 16 hydrogen. Contribution to the m will be 1 times the 16 hydrogen. So they have the same contribution to the MR. They will have the same percentage by mass for both hydrogen and oxygen.